Hello everyone. Welcome back to my third cell chart video tutorial. Today we are going to actually do the cell cell communication and network analysis. So first let's load all the packages, cell chart, patchwork, circulate, and the set the options. In cell chart video tutorial one, we created a cell chart object and named it as the cell chart human skin LSRDS. And we saved this object for today's analysis. So let's load in the cell chart object. So next we can set the cell chart database for our analysis. So because the data set is human skin single cell RNA sequencing data set. So we need to use the human cell chat database for our analysis. If you want to use the full database for your analysis, you can set the cell chat database dot human as cell chat database dot use. For the cell chat online tutorial, it only uses the, the secreted signaling pathways for the cell-cell communication network analysis. So we can set uh, the secreted signaling pathways as cell chat database dot use. If we click the cell chat database, you can see we only have 1199 ligand receptor pairs. I showed you in the second video, the full human database has 1939 ligand receptor pairs. So we loaded the data and also set the cell chat database. So now we can add the secreted signaling database into the cell chat object. Before we do this, we can have a look at the cell chat object. You can see at the moment, in the cell chat object, we only have the normalized matrix data and also the metadata for the cell types information. You can see here, for the data base slot, the list is zero. So now we can add the cell chat database into the cell chat object. So let's run this code. Now we can have a look at the cell chat object again. You can see now we added the cell signaling database into the cell chat object. You can see the interactions. It is 1199 ligand receptor pairs. So we added the cell database into cell chat object, and then we can do the analysis. So first we can subset the data. Because for cell-cell communication analysis, we only analyze the ligand receptor pairs that are presented in the cell chat database. So we can subset the genes from the cell chat object that are presented in the cell database. So before we run the subset data function, we can have a look at the cell chat object again. You can see here in the data slot, the data signaling is zero. If we subset the data, then we can have a look at the cell chat object again. Now you can see in the data signaling slot, we have 555 genes. That means there are 555 genes in the cell chat database are expressed in our cell chat object. Among those genes, some are ligand, some are receptor. So for the rest of our analysis, we only focus on the 555 gene for ligand receptor interactions. So we subset the 
genes from the data set. So now we can pre-process in the expression data. First, we identify the overexpressed genes from the 555 gene list for the cell chart object. Next, we can identify or express the interactions in the object. So after that, uh, we can run an optional step to project the gene expression data onto protein-protein interaction. So you don't have to run this step, but I found that if I run this step, you can identify more signal learning pathways. So let's project the expression data onto protein-protein interaction and uh, the data set is from human screen tissues so we use the human protein database to project the gene expression data okay it is done let's have a look at the cell chart object again you can see now in the data projection data slot we project the 555 G expression data to the protein protein interactions. So after the data projection, we can compute the communication probability and also emphasize new the communication network. So if you didn't run the projection step, then you can just run the computer community probability function because we projected the gene expression data onto the protein protein interaction so we can set the raw use as the force then we only use the projected data to compute the communication probabilities so before we run the code let's have a look at the cell chart object again you can see in the net slot is zero, and also the net pathway slot is zero. If we run the computer communication probabilities, we will save the data in the net slot. So let's run this code. So cell chat used the training method to calculate the average gene expression and also the p-values. So our finished the statistical analysis, we can have a look at the cell chart object again. You can see now we add the probability and also the p-value in the net data slot. Because we have uh, 12 cell types in the data set and also there are 656 ligand and receptor pairs. You know when we subset the data set we only have 555 genes but now we have 656 ligand receptor pairs that is because some ligands can interact with different receptors or some receptors can bind to different ligands so now you know we saved the probability and also the p-value in the net data slot so next we can um, remove the cell-cell communication network if there are only few number of cells in the cell groups have the cell-cell communication network so we only keep the cell-cell communication network that at least 10 cells show the interactions in all the cell groups so we can use the parameter minimum cells as 10 to filter out the 
cell cell communication networks. So next we can compute the cell cell communication signal learning pathways. We will save this data in the net pathway data slot. If we have a look at the cell chat object again, you can see now in the net pathway data slot, we identified the 47 signal learning pathways between different cell types. So now we need to calculate the aggregated cell communication network. Then we can plot the network between different cell types. So let's aggregate the network. If we have a look at the cell chat object again, now you can see in the net data slot we have four nests. We have the probability p-value, now we aggregated the, the count for each cell type and also the weight for the cell, cell communication network between different cell types. So now we perform the cell chat communication network analysis. So we can use the count and the weight to visualize the networks between different cell types. We can have a look at the count in the net data slot. You can see the count numbers for each cell type interacting with the other cell types and also the weight for each cell type. So after the analysis, we are ready to produce some figures and uh, show the network between different cell types. I showed uh, you the count data and also the weight data numbers. So we can group the count and the weight data for each cell type. Then we set the parameters for the plotting. We will plot two images in the same figure. So first we can plot the total number of cell cell communication network between different cell types. Then next we can plot the weight between different cell types among the 12 cell types in this data set. So there are the circle plots. Let's zoom in. You can see the circle plot for the number of interactions between uh, different cell types and also the interaction weight between different cell types. We have 12 different cell types in this data set. So the circle plot is very beautiful, but it looks very complicated when we have so many cell types and also there are 47 signal learning pathways. If you want to clearly see how each cell type interacts with 11 different cell types, we can make a new plot. First, let's shut off the circle plot. Then we will use the net weight as the example to plot individual cell types for the cell-cell communication network with the other cell types. So let's get the net weight again as the map. Then we can set the plotting parameter as two rows. Each row has six images. Now we can plot the interactions for each cell type. Okay, so the plot windows is too small. We can make it larger. Let's try it again. And we can zoom in to see each figure. You can see the first one is the FOE positive fibroblast intact with other cell types. Second one is FBN1 positive fibroblast interact with the other cell types. So we have 12 cell types here, so we have 12 images. The last one is the NKT cell interact with the other cell types. The image looks quite small. 
we can just plot the network for the last two cell types. We can shut off this plotting again. Then we can rerun the code to just have two images. We can zoom in again. You can see now we have a network for the CD40 LG positive TC cells interacting with the other cell types. And also we have the network for the NKT cells interacting with the other cell types. So in summary, in this video tutorial, I showed you how to perform cell chart analysis to identify cell-cell communication network. So we can save the analyze the cell chart object. Then we can use it in my next video tutorial to show you more plotting method. Okay, so I'm going to stop from here for today's video tutorial. If you are new to my channel, please subscribe to my channel and also share my videos with your friends. Thank you and see you in my next video tutorial.